Hi, I'm Zach Beveridge. You may have heard the term deep fake before, but if not, that's okay. Because in this video presentation, I'm going to cover the basics of deep fakes and how they can be made. Specifically, we'll be learning a little bit more about synthetic media as a whole, and then taking an in-depth look at Deep Face Lab, which is the number one tool to create whole face and head deep fakes. So in this video, I'm gonna do my best to answer these four main questions. Number one, what is a deep fake? Number two, what is Deep Face Lab? Number three, how does Deep Face Lab work? And number four, how do you make a deepfake? So let's start with an introduction to synthetic media, also known as AI generated media, generative media, personalized media, and the term we all know and love, deepfakes. Synthetic media is the broad term for the production, manipulation, and modification of data and media by automated means. Usually this means it's done through the use of artificial intelligence, but not always. When this is done with the intent of misleading people or changing the original meaning of something, the term deepfake is generally used. However, since this term has become like a buzzword today, it gets thrown around a lot when referring to almost any synthetic media meant to replicate a person. Synthetic media as a whole comes in all shapes and sizes, from photos and videos of models and people that don't actually exist, to animation and drawing tools, uh, synthetic voice manipulation that is meant to mimic a real person, or even this procedural story generator. It's used for a million different reasons in all sorts of fields across the world. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. As much as I would like to talk about all the different media tools that have been created using AI and how they're used, I need to focus on one topic because it gets overwhelming very fast. So let's focus on Deepface Lab. Simply put, Deepface Lab is a tool that takes all of the hardest parts of deepfake creation and puts them in the hands of the people. Open source software, baby, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, it's all written in Python, so that's how you know it's good. This paper published on ARXIV.org titled Deep Face Lab, a simple, flexible, and extensible face swapping framework introduces us to Deep Face Lab with this quote. Since deep learning has empowered the realm of computer vision in recent years, the manipulation of a digital image, especially manipulation of human portraits image, has improved rapidly and achieved photorealistic results in most cases. Face swapping is an eye-catching task in, gener in generating fake content by transferring a source face to the destination while maintaining the facial movements and expression deformations of the source. Wow, that's great. Thanks for reading that paragraph out loud, Zach, is probably what you're thinking to yourself, and I don't blame you. For something like this, it's fair that I probably should just show you what it does rather than explain it. For example, maybe it's been a lifelong dream to put Jim Carrey in The Shining. Or you could really miss the golden days of Arnold Schwarzenegger. But most importantly, Deep Face Lab allowed me to make this monstrosity. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. Except, this could just be a really bad deep fake. Ah, beautiful, isn't it? And it only took 20 plus hours for that lame joke. Now, how does this all work? Because I promise it's not just the face swap filter from Snapchat. Well, the key tool behind most synthetic media techniques is something known as Generative Adversarial Networks, also known as GANs. These frameworks create generative models via an adversarial process. So this means that two models are trained simultaneously and then compete with one another. There is a generative model, which is referred to as G, that captures the data distribution, and then a discriminative model, 
D that capture or that estimates the probability that a sample came from the training data rather than from G. So G is trained to maximize the probability of D making a mistake. You want to create the fakest data possible to trick the other one into believing that it's real. This framework corresponds to what's known as a zero-sum minimax two-player game. For Deep Face Labs specifically, the data pipeline has three main components. Extraction, training, and conversion. These three parts are sequential as each step cannot happen without proper data from the previous. Extraction is the first phase in DeepFace Lab and contains many algorithms and processing steps. For the sake of clarity and brevity, this is broken down into three main parts. Number one is face detection, then face alignment, and then face segmentation. Face detection is exactly what it sounds like. The goal is to find the target face in the given folders, source and destination. DeepFace Lab uses S3FD, which is a single shot scale invariant face detector as its default face detector, but there are other options available. After detection comes face alignment. Deep Face Lab provides two canonical types of facial extraction algorithms. One is a heat map based facial landmark algorithm known as 2DFAN, which is used for faces with normal posturing. And Two is PRNet with 3D face priority information, which is for faces that have large Euler angles in the yaw, pitch, and roll. Essentially, this just means that a face where part of it is hidden from being pitched in a certain direction. After face alignment, a data folder with standardized front and side view aligned source images is obtained. Then TarusNet, which is a fine-grained face segmentation network, is placed on top of the aligned source, and all parts of the image are segmented to maintain proper layering. What this means is that a face with hair in the way, or fingers, even glasses, um, can be layered properly and distinguished so that all parts of the face are known to the algorithm. The completed extraction process will give the user aligned faces with a precise mask and calculated facial landmarks. This is a vital step as the more accurate the face masking and training data, the more efficiently you can train the face model and dataset. Training is the most vital role in achieving photorealistic face swapping results. Because of this, Deep Face Lab has created two different structures for training the face models. They're known as DF and LIAE. As shown in the figure, DF consists of an encoder as well as an inter with shared weights between source and destination. However, they have a decoder which belongs to source and destination separately. As shown in this figure, LIAE has a more complex structure with shared weight encoder, decoder, and two independent intermodels. Another difference compared to the DF is that interAB is used to generate both latent code of source and destination, while interB only outputs the latent code of the destination. You get all that? Alright, good, me neither. The point here is that the generative face models are created. The algorithm designs models that can create images of the input face in different positions, lighting, and sizes, effectively creating an all-purpose replica of the original input data to put on the destination data. Finally, we come to the conversion phase, which is simplified in this figure. Deep Face Lab users can use this phase to swap the trained face models of the source and destination material, or vice versa. For source to destination swapping, the final step of the swapping scheme is to transform the generated face alongside its generated mask from the destination decoder to the original position of the target image in source. 
Blending is an important aspect of this, with the goal for the realigned, reenacted face to seamlessly fit with the target image and its outer contour. To keep a consistent skin complexion and give a more realistic final image, DeepFace Lab provides a number of color transfer and blending algorithms to make the source model more adaptable to the target image. Once this step is done, the individual frames are merged back into a video, video file format and you have a complete deepfake. The theory is great and all, but it doesn't actually teach you how to use DeepFace Lab. Luckily, there are a million tutorials online for this, so I won't go into extreme detail on how I accomplished this, but I wanted to give some of my insight and the things I learned along the way. For my process, I specifically chose to use the XSEG masking process and the SEA HD model training. It seemed like it was the easiest to do at the time, and the tutorial that I found used it, so I just followed that. It's worth noting that DeepFace Lab doesn't ship as a completed desktop program with the GUI. You download the system as a zip file that contains all the necessary components to run the processes. So it includes everything in the necessary scripts to uh, you know, the Python library, TensorFlow, CUDA, FFmpeg, uh, libraries, etc. It's all in the zip folder. Um, once it's downloaded, you don't need to go searching for any of the parts to make it work. Each part of the process that I mentioned earlier has relevant batch scripts associated with it that do each part for you. You'll start by clearing the workspace and preparing your selected footage. I edited my source and destination clips in Adobe Premiere Pro to make sure I was feeding it frames that were pure faces and didn't have anyone else in them. I specifically chose a video from Vsauce with a simple background and lighting, and I shot mine in a similar way. This isn't really necessary, but I want to make it as simple as possible so I wasn't spending years training the system. You then use the relevant batch scripts to extract the frames from the source and destination video. This is a quick process, and it just, just taking the full video and breaking it down into in, individual PNG frames. After this, the face set is extracted. This is where the facial recognition algorithm comes into play and the relevant frames are aligned and saved as a face set. Using the extracted face set, you then begin the XSEG masking process. To train the model, you have to manually mask a number of frames for training data. This can be a tad tedious, but the more frames you mask and the more accurate you are, the better the XSEG set can learn and give you a perfect mask. Once you've trained the XSEG masking model, you can begin the face model training. I chose to use the SAEHD model, and let me tell you, everything about this process is a resource hog. I could not have any other programs open on my computer during this time. The swap memory from my GPU to CPU had to be drastically increased. And that's not to mention that I also had to increase the page file size in Windows to 70 plus gigabytes, which I didn't even know was possible. I also had to make sure that my computer was upgraded to the latest version of Windows, which you know always takes a while, um, so that I could use hardware acceler accelerated GPU scheduling since DeepFace Lab refused to work without it. And even once I had the model training, I was worried about burning out my poor computer since this made my graphics card idle consistently above and around 87 degrees Celsius, which is about 188 degrees Fahrenheit for those of us that prefer freedom units. I took the reading at the keyboard too, and it was sitting at 125 degrees Fahrenheit, and I touched it and it was very hot. Here you can see a side-by-side -side of what four hours of training looks like versus about 11 hours of training. Do note that I switched the color algorithm on the later version, so that's not attributed to the training length. So would I do this for fun? Probably not, unless I built a system specifically for it, because this prevented me from using my computer for anything else for about 24 hours. All in all though, I enjoyed the process, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.